What's up you guys, it's Cody. Today we're talking about money traps that you need to avoid in your 20s. If you wanna get financially ahead and you wanna be in a spot where you don't have to worry about living paycheck to paycheck or worry about where that next check is gonna come from to cover your bills, here's a couple of things that we're gonna talk about that you need to know so that you can stay out of that position. So jumping right into it, I don't wanna waste any time. The first item on our list we're gonna be talking about is cars. I see so many younger people jump right into a car that they don't need. Banks and credit unions will often get you pre-qualified for a new loan on a car and they're going to give you an amount that's higher than you probably want to spend. I see so many people get into a very high car payment before they have the income to really justify it. Now, I should mention on this list, I don't want to restrict you from going out and living life or living with the car that you really love or spending money on things that you really enjoy. I just want to make sure that you're making the right financial decisions so that you can really have that last and so you can spend spend a little bit more money on those things that you love and not be so bogged down by stuff that you really don't care about. So the first thing that I want to mention here when it comes to cars is try to get into a car that's going to be able to get you from point A to point B just like all cars do with as little problems as possible. You have to have something reliable because you don't want it breaking down on you all the time. You want it to be able to start and not have problems on a day-to-day -day basis. So that is very important, but you also don't need a brand new car. Like I said, banks and credit unions would be more than happy to give you a loan on that because it's very easy for them to repossess the car should you stop making payments. Try to avoid that. Try to avoid getting into a car that has a massive car payment. For each person, it's gonna be a little bit different. I would say try to keep your car payment under $250 a month until you're making at least a significant income to be able to support a higher car payment. The next thing on our list that I'd highly recommend looking at is college. If you're thinking about going to college, make sure that you know the actual costs of doing this and make sure that you have a plan for what you're gonna be doing upon graduating. I've talked about this before on the channel, whether or not college is actually worth it and if there are better alternatives. I think that college is one of those things that you should definitely go and do and invest your time and money into if you're gonna be graduating in something specific that does require a degree. This is basically you know, different professions like being a doctor or being an engineer or a lawyer, right? You have to go to some type of formal schooling in order to do that. There's no way for you to just be able to study books and kind of wing it without going through the formal steps of college and university and become a doctor. No hospital or clinic is going to hire you unless you have a formal degree and you've gone through those necessary steps. So by all means, when it comes to college and university, if you're going for something specific, then go for it. Go to college and do that. If you're not, if you're just going for a communications degree or a business degree or you know just something that really doesn't matter, then maybe take a second look at it. Look at different trade schools, look at sales, look at building your way up and climbing the ladder in some type of corporate structure. Look at doing something on your own, self-employment. You've got so many opportunities in today's day and age. You've got everything from doing YouTube videos just like this. You can do freelance filmmaking or photography. You can do freelance graphic design. You can do so many different things on your own and be able to make a living. Now, it is going to be hard, but when you weigh the costs of not going to college, not taking on that student debt, and the four to six years or more that it's gonna to take to complete that, and you weigh it against what it actually takes to cut your teeth doing something self-employed, I think it's something that you should consider. So think about you avoiding that as a money trap because if you go and do something that you love, let's say that you love graphic design, if you put in six months to a year or even more to get really dang good at it and build your network and be able to start producing jobs where you can get paid, that's gonna be way quicker than going the route of going to college for the same exact thing and putting in four years and going into tens of thousands of dollars worth of debt. Also, look at sales positions. You can find sales positions especially in real estate and mortgage like I've done, and you can make a great amount of money doing this. You don't have to sell that many homes to be able to be successful, but you do have to be able to weather the ride of the roller coaster that goes up and then comes down. You're not getting paid every month, no pay is guaranteed, and it's gonna be hard. You're gonna have to put yourself out there, you're gonna have to go talk to people, and you're gonna have to cut your teeth on getting familiar with how the business works and how to get clients and then sell them a house. But if you're able to do this, there's no reason you can't make six figures in your first couple of years, and you don't have any debt when doing it. The third item on our list that I wanna talk about is be careful about buying the highest quality item 
that is gonna serve the same purpose as something that you could find for cheaper. A great way to look at this is looking at brand name uh, items, right? When it, whether it comes to cars, jumping back to cars is a perfect example. A BMW and a Toyota accomplish the same exact thing. Sure, the BMW is gonna be a little bit nicer, but it's gonna cost more, it's gonna cost more to repair, and it's gonna lose its value even quicker than a Toyota would. So you need to make that determination of whether driving a nice car or having that name brand item is really important to you. Other areas where you can take this into consideration are food, right? When you go to the grocery store, do you need the name brand cereal? Do you need the name brand bread? Do you need the name brand soap? You know, a lot of these items are the exact same as the generic off-brand items. They do the exact same thing and they serve the same purpose. If it's food, it usually tastes very similar. Now, there are some things where you probably do want to get the name brand because it's got that unique taste, so go for it. You know, go for it. But on the things that you really don't care about, be careful. Look at spending your money a little bit wiser by trying to find something cheaper. One thing that I always ask myself is, can I buy the same exact item for a cheaper price? Where can I find that item? When you think about things this way, you're really gonna be able to change the way that you think about things, and you're gonna look for those deals. You're gonna look at buying a drink or look at buying a coffee. I don't go out for coffee very often because I know that I can make it at home and it's way cheaper if I do this. So being able to look at things objectively and figure out where can I buy this for a cheaper price is really gonna help you. If you can avoid this money trap in your 20s, you're gonna carry it with you throughout your life. And like I said, you don't need to sacrifice on every Thing, just make sure that you're sacrificing on the things that you really don't care about. All right, so moving on, jumping into item number four, we're gonna be talking about housing. Now, whether you're looking at buying a home or you're renting, it's so common to see people get into something that is bigger than they actually need. I think that our generation, and I'm part of this, we come from a spot where we see our parents or aunts and uncles or people who are older than us who have big giant homes, right? A lot of these homes were built anywhere from between the 1960s and today. And we see that our parents or people older than us have these big homes and they were able to afford them, right? But that's because they've been working for their whole entire life to be able to do that. So one thing that you need to look out for is don't get into that trap of thinking that one, you'll be able to go right into a home like that. Don't get stuck in the trap of thinking that you actually need that. Figure out a way to live with a little bit less space. You'll probably end up being a little bit happier anyway. If you can find out how to live in a two bedroom instead of a three bedroom, you could save hundreds of dollars per month on your rent or your mortgage and really just be in a better spot financially so that you're not having to put so much of your money into your housing every single month. If you haven't seen my videos about house hacking, that's something that I'd really recommend looking into, especially when it comes to housing because for most people, housing is gonna be your number one biggest expense every single month. So if you can figure out a way to reduce that expense by 50% or maybe even 100%, you can save vast amounts of money and be able to put that into savings, put it into investments, put it into paying off other debt, which hopefully you shouldn't have if you've watched this video, and just figure out where you can place that money in a better spot so that you can get even further ahead financially. When it comes to being financially independent, it's all about freedom and choices. That's really what we're after here. It's not about being greedy. It's not about being able to just blow money or anything like that. But when you have money and you're not tied to a paycheck every single week or every two weeks, you get the freedom and the opportunity to take time off, to spend it with your family, to go on trips, to do things that you actually wanna do. And that's what life is all about. All right, now jumping into number five, this is probably one of the biggest ones for me. I know that this has been life-changing and it kind of relates to number three on our list, but it's different enough that I wanted to point it out here specifically. And that is clothes and shoes. You can buy clothes and shoes that are very expensive and you can also buy shoes and clothes that will be almost as good for very cheap. One of my favorite places to shop at is Ross, and I really like H&M because you can get really high quality clothes for a very cheap price. The other thing is shoes, right? You don't need $150 shoes. You can get by with shoes that cost $30, $40, $50, and they're gonna be you know, 99% as good as the ones that are more expensive. If you just love clothes and you wanna spend your money on that, I totally get that. Buy the nice stuff that makes you happy. But if it doesn't make you happy, don't just buy it because you feel like you have to. You don't have to buy Nike shoes. You don't have to buy you know, the nicest clothes or whatever. You can figure out a way to buy 
stuff that's a lot cheaper that's still gonna serve the same purpose. I think everybody's got that one thing that they really like to spend money on, and that's actually one of the habits and uh, tendencies of the rich that I seem to notice. If you look at rich or affluent people who are really well off, they've generally got one thing that they spend money on unapologetically. They'll basically spend as much money as possible on these items because they have so much passion for it and they absolutely love it. But on those other things, they're usually as cheap as possible. So for you, that might be clothes. Maybe clothes are the things that make you happy, you really like fashion and design, and you wanna look good. Then maybe that's your thing, but when it comes to food, you might not care. You might just be able, like, you're like, hey, give me the cheapest food that I can find. I just need to eat, it doesn't really matter. But on those clothes, you're gonna spend a lot of money. So guys, that wraps up the video here. Give me a thumbs up on it if you liked this content. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Click that button down below and the bell to get notified when I release new videos. And drop a comment down below with any money traps that I might have missed here on the list, whether it's in your 20s, your 30s, your 40s, or your 50s, or even just any point in time. What are those money traps that you need to avoid? Drop a comment down below and I'll see you in the next one.